Fox Sports 1 correspondent Jenna Lane has more from camp. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have begun their preparations for game one of the preseason, and it'll be the first time this team takes the field under new head coach Lovey Smith. And while most people know what to expect from a Lovey Smith defense, there's a certain element of intrigue and mystique surrounding Jeff Tedford's offense. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a team ravaged by injuries. Since the season began, they've lost five starters on defense, including all pro defensive tackle Gerald McCoy, who suffered a broken hand against the Rams on Sunday. They also lost middle linebacker Mason Foster, who suffered a shoulder injury. I talked to Foster earlier today, and he said he would not be playing against the Falcons, but McCoy is still holding out hope that he can play on Thursday. Right now, he's experimenting with different types of braces designed to protect his hand and at the same time still allow him to rush the passer effectively. Right now, though, not looking so promising, although on a positive note, defensive end Michael Johnson did return to practice, and he could very well play against the Falcons. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers began OTAs this week with their first practice that was open to the media today. And unlike previous segments of the offseason program where guys are relegated to mere classroom instruction and positional drills, they actually get a chance to line up offense versus defense. Still no pads though, but they're just a little bit closer to playing some actual football. During his press conference, and this is just my personal mm -hmm. opinion, you know, I love it when a guy comes up there and just exudes the confidence. I felt like in his case, he forced it a little bit. I don't feel like he needed to go up there and show it because you know what? I think he already kind of has that natural confidence with him. But you know, I love the fact that he came up, he took that podium, he was loose, he was relaxed, he smiled, he was open and honest about things. Now, interestingly enough, he admitted today that at this time last year, he wasn't so sure that Jameis Winston was going to be the guy. And he said he really needed the process to play out to be able to make that decision. But interestingly enough, this time last year, then head coach Levy Smith had come out and said that he wouldn't have a problem drafting Jameis Winston, knowing all the allegations against him. He said he'd be comfortable selecting him. And if you ask some of the scouts that were in attendance this week, who stood out? A number of them will tell you that Caputo did, not just because of his physical ability, although it was impressive, but because of his intensity and his focus. And as one scout told me, this guy was on a mission. When it comes to playing defensive back in college football, there really is no room for any doubt. But in the case of USF senior Jamie Bird, he had some serious reservations about moving from safety to Husky under Tom Allen's new 4-2-5 defense. And he approached head coach Willie Taggart and said, Coach, I don't know if this is right for me. And Taggart told him, Jamie, you just need to give it a chance. And since then, he is a big reason why this USF Bulls team is now bowl eligible for the first time since 2010 and has a shot at the AAC title. Now, I got to be honest, though, because there weren't any 11 on 11s this weekend, the most they did were seven on sevens. You can't really get a true evaluation of these guys in the trenches. The thing that they're working on the most right now is refining these guys' technique. But of course, the real test is going to be when they bring everybody together for that mandatory three day mini camp. That'll be here before you know it. And he's actually a guy that fashions himself after a Cam Chancellor. And interestingly enough, I had mentioned that on Twitter to Cam Chancellor. Chancellor responded back and says, yeah. I feel him. He sees it. It's different. Hybrid. So I thought that was pretty cool that Jack earned some praise from a guy that he's really tried to emulate over the years. We just finished up the fourth Bucks training camp practice and the second consecutive practice in pads. And while a lot of people are wondering how Jameis Winston looked, I've really got to hand it to the defense because once again today, those guys really stepped up. If you remember yesterday, Winston was picked off three times by the defense. And today, he had some struggles as well, with Alteron Werner intercepting him at the very beginning of practice. And the one thing that was emphasized to me, and I agree with it, is that we need to accept the fact that Andrew Luck is not the new standard. He is an outlier. We are not going to see a guy like him for a long time. After weeks and weeks of Bucks head coach Lovey Smith saying that his Bucks team wasn't quite Tennessee Titans ready, it was do or die time for the Bucks today. And unfortunately, only one team came to play today and only one team appeared to be ready, but that wasn't Lovey Smith's Buccaneers. In fact, they struggled in all facets of the game. It was a very busy day here today at One Buck Place. Tight end Tim Wright was traded away to the New England Patriots in exchange for six-time Pro Bowl guard Logan Mankins, a guy who immediately upgrades an offensive line that surrendered 10 sacks this preseason. But what does this mean for Richie Incognito? Both Bucks GM Jason Light and head coach Lovey Smith said they're still keeping their options open in that regard. The 
The Florida Gators had their annual Pro Day Tuesday with representatives from all 32 NFL teams in attendance. And of course, the main attraction was cornerback Vernon Hargreaves, a graduate of Wharton High School. Now, he didn't participate in any of the testing. He sat on his 40 time from the combine, a 4-5, also sat on his vertical, 39 inches, but he did participate in positional work. So scouts were able to see his reaction time, his hips, getting in and out of his breaks. And by the looks of things, and in talking to some scouts afterwards, he likely solidified himself as a top 10 draft pick. As soon as I started playing football, I knew I was going to go to the NFL. That's just how I thought. That's what I wanted to do. And uh, I felt like that was the only way. And, uh, you know, now I'm here. I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy of what I've done so far. And I uh, still got a lot more to do. What would it mean for you to have <laughs> the hometown team select you at that number nine spot? Uh, that would be great. That would be amazing. You know, my mom would be right down the street. So that would be good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. And you can see there just what a phenomenal athlete Hargraves is. He changes direction so well. He's so fluid when he moves. He's got the vertical leaping ability. He's got the ball skills. And he's got the frame to match. So all around the complete package at that cornerback position. And you can also see there, that's Bucks defensive backs coach John Hoke, who's leading him in those positional drills. So you know that they were keeping a very close eye on his workout today. In fact, I counted four representatives from the Bucks that were here today taking in not just his workout, but all the prospects. So there were a lot of people pegging Hargreaves to go to the Bucks at number nine, and the team is set to formally meet with him. Reporting from Gainesville, with Sports Talk Florida, I'm Jenna Lane. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers were back in the building today after a few days of rookie camp, and it gave an opportunity for them to get some work in with the veterans. Meanwhile, we got a chance to talk to some of the offensive coaches to get their thoughts on how things went in camp, and in particular, how things were looking with Jameis Winston. Both his quarterbacks coach Mike Bajakian and the offensive coordinator Dirk Cutter have said they're most impressed with his ability to retain so much information. He, he's he's. Sure, we were able to cover some stuff in the evaluation process. I'd meet with him and install certain concepts and certain protections and things like that. So his recall was very good there. What, what I've noticed is he studied. I mean, we, we gave him uh, the playbook information the day after we drafted him, and he's worked hard to comprehend that. So I know what I've covered with him prior to him being here in the evaluation process. Well, he's already got a very firm grasp of um, things that we never covered. Now, what about all those interceptions? He threw 18 his final year at Florida State. We got a lot to work on. Now, you know, there's going to be interceptions. Okay, there's a, uh, all of a sudden the ball's batted, it's tipped, it hits the receiver right in the shoulder pads, pops up. I mean, there's there's crazy stuff that's going to happen. But avoidable turnovers, you know, like unforced errors in tennis or something like that. I mean, you just we can't have unforced errors. I mean, we give them away possessions, uh, no good. I mean, uh, the, our defense is going to do a great job of taking it away. We got to do a great job of protecting. And how have the veterans taken to him? Are they seeing him as a leader? Oh yeah. I mean, that's just how Jameis is. That there, there's nothing fake about Jameis. Okay, he's he is a is naturally gifted a, as a leader. He he's got a certain charisma about him, especially on the field. I think I think players are naturally attracted to him. I think I think players like playing with him. And uh, you know he, he comes out here and he has a good time. He's but he's also he's also learning and he's also a rookie. One thing that Bajakian also emphasized is that because Winston can process information so quickly, he feels the Bucks can run an up-tempo offense if they choose to. And Cutter wanted to put some things into perspective for us so that we could perhaps temper our expectations. He said that the veterans are now on their fifth install on their second round of it, and the rookies are now on five days being here, and they're still on their first install. So he emphasized to us that this is not a 100-yard sprint, and this is a marathon. They're going to bring their guys along accordingly, and that includes Winston. Reporting from One Buck Place with Sports Talk Florida, I'm Jenna Lane. After weeks and weeks of Bucks head coach Lovey Smith saying that his Bucks team wasn't quite Tennessee Titans ready, it was do or die time for the Bucks today. And unfortunately, only one team came to play today and only one team appeared to be ready, but that wasn't Lovey Smith's Buccaneers. In fact, they struggled in all facets of the game, surrendered 42 points. In fact, about halfway through the first half, they were down 21 nothing. Mariota threw for four touchdowns and actually had a perfect quarterback rating. That's how good he performed. So just a few minutes into the fourth quarter, they pulled him out of the game.
Meanwhile, Jameis Winston threw two interceptions, including a pick six. So a really difficult day for the Buccaneers. Final score, 42 to 14. A few bright spots in that Austin Safarian Jenkins did have two touchdowns. You also saw Gerald McCoy with a sack and a forced fumble. George Johnson had a fumble recovery as well. And Jaquie Smith had a sack. But overall, a really tough day for the Buccaneers. Their quarterback played better uh, today. Uh, their football team played better today. Their coach did a better job of coaching their football team than I did today. But it's today. This is one game. It's not overreact to a, a bad performance. But we're going to feel bad about this one and give them all their due credit. But it, it's no more than that. It's just the complete opposite from an ideal start that you want. I mean, we didn't stop them. You know, offense can't get going because of us. So, I mean, I mean, we got to tighten up. We got to find a way to get better. We got to start fast. I mean, it's, it's too hard. It's, teams are too good in the NFL to get down 21 nothing and expect to, to win. Like, you can't do that. Uh, what's done is done. Uh, we have an L. It's 0-1. But what we do have control of is how, where we go from here. Uh, the, the work that we put in from here, and, you know, it's in the past, and we got to move past from it and go, ne go towards next week. So the most important thing is getting better, and uh, expect expectations are things that are, are made by you guys. We have our own internal expectations, and obviously it was to win this game, and some things don't always work out the way you want to, but that doesn't stop us or anyone else on the team, coaches included, staff, everybody. It doesn't stop us from, from getting better and moving on to the next opponent. That, that first drive is just killed us. First shot killed us, but you know the thing is we are gonna bounce back. It is one game, uh, something to learn from. Uh, you know they don't pressure us like we expected. They them to pressure us. You know play a lot of zone, a lot of too hot. Uh, but you know we're gonna bounce back. That's the main thing.